Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create height field visibility masks. That way we can identify the most prominent or most visible parts of our terrain versus the more hidden ones color coded in blue. The way this works is we're shooting points uh, or rather rays from each position on the height field to a lot of sampling positions all across the terrain and see whether they get blocked by the terrain itself. So let's uh, create a new scene and set up a height field. As you may know, each height field consists of at least two primitives. The one is called height, which holds the height values and a mask, and the mask is what we're going to write to. First of all, though, we need some elevation. By using the height field noise node, we get values into the height field. You can activate the intrinsics and see the volume min and the volume max value for that. As you can see here, this is where uh, the volume min and max are stored, so that way you can see the range. Now, before we start shooting rays around, we should simplify the terrain so we don't have to compute as much. Let's resample the height field down to 0.2 and create our target positions by converting the height field to a grid. I will lower the density even more. So this is these are all our target positions. I will promote them to the detail class. That way we have less to compute or less to script rather and change the name of the positions array from capital P to positions. Under the detail attributes, you should find all the positions now stored in one large array. Let's use the height field wrangle after the resample node and connect its second input to the attribute promote and create a vector array called positions again and find all the positions using the detail function. Again set to positions on the second input. Next we are going to loop over all positions using a for each node. Now, before we start shooting rays around, we should define the position of our ray. So that's the origin of the ray based on the current voxels position. I'll just update the Y component to the height of the height field. And to make extra sure we don't get stuck, I will use the minimal position based on that position, the minimal position on the grid. So now our ray origins should sit right on the mesh. I will even lift up the Y component by five units. So it's floating slightly above. And uh, I might just do the same for the target position. So let's just update this by five units as well. And what we're doing now is we're basically just counting how many rays missed. So let's set up a mask, initialize it with zero. And the intersect function will just return the polygon number called PR. And if this is negative, we know that the ray did not get interrupted. We're shooting rays across the mesh connected to the second input since the one. And then we give the position of the ray, shoot along a direction we still have to define and we're not interested in the position it's hitting. We're not interested in the relative coordinates on the polygon. This is why we set both to zero. 
all we want is the primitive number we're hitting. Now let's define the direction. This is rather simple. We take the position of our sampling point and subtract the position of the ray from it. Next, we are updating the mask by adding whether we have hit nothing. This is a primitive number below zero, so as soon as it returns a negative primitive number, we know it has missed. And then after the loop, we are dividing by the number of positions it has checked against. So let's output this as a mask. And this should take a few seconds and you will see that it's now being tinted. You can also tell by the minimum and maximum value of that mask that this has worked. So now the more prominent areas are color coded red. The only downside is now of course that I kind of lost my original height field. So let's use the high resolution height field and use another height field wrangle to integrate the mask we've just calculated. Let's connect the second input to the visibility. And now try to integrate it. First of all, I would like to know the minimum and maximum value of my mask. So I will create a variable called mask min and use the prim intrinsic function on the second input and ask for the volume min value of the primitive. I know it's number one, but just to make this waterproof, I will set the name to primitive and ask which primitive number the mask has in the second input. So that way it will tell us this primitive number one contains the mask. And we'll do that same for the maximum. So let's create a variable called mask max and ask for the volumes max value now we can sample the mask from the second input using a volume cubic sample which has a smoother quality and ask for the mask based on our position. The mask will be fit from the minimum to the maximum between 0 and 1. And we're going to output the mask. That way we have a smooth mask, but a rather fast computation on a high resolution height field. After sampling the mask, we can now visualize it using a height field visualize node. And we're going to don't change the material, but come up with a custom tinting. So we want to color code the mask using infrared. This look a lot better in visualizations or just to prove the point that we were able to find the most visible spot on the height field. Hidden parts of the map are now coded in blue as we've seen before. Thank you for watching.